we'll start with this. It appears that Clarissa Shields is going to be facing Emma Cozen December 11th as part of a double header with Marshall, that is, Savannah Marshall. Clarissa Shields is expected to make a mandated middleweight champion defense in her return to the boxing ring December 11th. BoxingScene.com has learned that Shields intends to defend her WBC 160 pound title against Emma Cozen in a double header that'll also feature rival Savannah Marshall against an opponent yet to be chosen. Shields and Marshall likely will meet sometime in the spring if they win their upcoming matches in Birmingham, England. Shields essentially won't get any time off after participating in her second MMA match October 27th in Hollywood, Florida. If Shields wins her MMA fight against Abigail Montez, let's hope she does, walks away from the PFL's cage unscathed, she'll leave Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, take a few days off, and then start training for her boxing match with Cozen six weeks later. It's a quick turnover. Sky Sports Box Office will offer the Shields Marshall doubleheader as a pay-per-view event in the United Kingdom and Ireland. A deal for United States TV rights to the Shields Marshall doubleheader hadn't been secured as of Monday afternoon. I heard a rumor, heard rumblings, that this is all part of what could be a Liam Williams versus Chris Eubank Jr. showdown. I want to say that I like the idea of both fighters fighting on the same card. I do think that's conducive towards building their fight, provided they make it through these preludes, these interim fights they're supposed to be having, though I don't think they're yet in a place where they should be participating in a Sky Sports pay-per-view. I think there's more work needs doing before you charge the fans. I don't think either of them should be on pay-per-view yet. There seems to be a rumor that Liam Williams and Chris Eubank Jr. are supposed to be a part of this same card. I very much like that fight. I do, though. Even if they can get that fight over the line and that rumor checks out, does that do enough for the card that it should be billed as a Sky Sports box office pay-per-view. It's a great fight, but it's not a title fight. I don't know how crazy the British boxing fans are going to be about having to purchase a card like this. Is it enough bang for their buck? Is it really value for money? I want to jump to conclusions just yet, but those eggs, they're going to need more bacon. You think about the opponent choice for Clarissa Shields, potentially unbeaten Emma Kozin of Slovenia. Emma Kozin, who's been around the block, fought one or two familiar faces. She's been in there with journeywoman Sanat Tarunin, Maria Lindbergh. Former IBF champion Chris Namas. Sports an unbeaten record of 21 wins, no losses, one draw with 11 knockouts. That's about as good as an opponent you can muster up for Clarissa Shields anywhere at or around these weights. Though I think of the fight itself as being in keeping with what we just saw with Savannah Marshall and Lolita Musea. Emma Kozin is not in the same stratosphere in terms of skill with Clarissa or Savannah. Yeah, she's got an unbeaten record. But so did Lolita Musea, and you see how long that fight lasted. Clarissa, highly skilled boxer, not the biggest puncher. It's conceivable that the Emma Kozin fight will go the distance. It will go the full 10 rounds. I would have much preferred to see Clarissa Shields lock horns with a Raquel Miller than an Emma Kozin, if I'm being honest. I feel that there's a missed opportunity there. To capitalize on that rivalry. In order to help sell this one, the problem is that Raquel Miller hasn't fought in roughly two years. She hasn't had a fight since November of 2019 when she beat Alma Ibarra, a victory that I think has aged well, all things considered. The then unbeaten Alma Ibarra. Kel Miller, she's an unbeaten fighter, sports professional record of 10 wins, no losses, no draws with four knockouts. She's somebody to look out for. She is one of Clarissa Shields' amateur and professional rivals. I reiterate, I think there's a missed opportunity there because while there's bad blood between Clarissa and Savannah, there's also bad blood between Clarissa and and Raquel. It's too bad Raquel's so inactive. Because there's no way she takes on a fight like this off of that amount of inactivity. There isn't. I feel like a Shields versus Miller fight is a more interesting situation, lends itself better towards building a Marshall fight than a Emma Cozen fight would because there's no bad blood between Shields and Cozen. It's not like Shields is a knockout artist. Even with that sizable discrepancy in skill between Emma Cozen and Clarissa Shields, in all likelihood, that's a fight that goes the distance. That's a fight that goes the full 10 rounds. It's not gonna galvanize the fight fans the way this past weekend's knockout did. Preliminary thoughts are, the card's looking like a bit of a tough sell. It is, I very much like the idea of Savannah Marshall and Clarissa Shields fighting on the same card in order to build their fight. I like the idea of that, but I'm not sure that it belongs on pay-per-view. We'll talk more about this as the fight date approaches. In super middleweight news, ahead of the Canelo Alvarez versus Caleb Plant undisputed title fight, we now have more information on what we can expect to see on that same card. 
two-time super middleweight champion Anthony Durrell battles exciting contender Marcos Hernandez yeah. in the co-main event of Canelo vs. Plant Showtime pay-per-view on Saturday, November 6th in a premier boxing champions event at the MGM Grand Arena in Las Vegas. Undefeated former world champion Ray Vargas returns to battle Mexico's Leonard Baez in a super bantamweight showdown. Plus, super lightweight contenders Elvis Rodriguez and Juan Pablo Romero square off in a pay-per-view opener at 9 p.m. Oh. And they're, uh, this really is one of the worst undercards I've seen. Shit. You got all these fighters that nobody's buzzing about intended to decorate the Canelo Alvarez versus Caleb Plant fight. And because none of these fighters are buzzing right now, you really are relying on Canelo Alvarez's star power. His star power and his star power alone in order to justify this fight's price point. I mean, how does this fight's undercard compare with Canelo Alvarez's last fight's undercard, the one with Billy Joe Saunders? The chief support for the Saunders fight was a world title tilt between the then reigning WBO light flyweight champion Elwin Soto and Katsunari Takayama. You had unbeaten heavyweight up-and-comer Frankie Sanchez. You had amateur standout Keyshawn Davis, all participating on that card, whereas on this card, you got a lot of guys that really aren't buzzing right now. Hell, one of them is coming right off a loss, Alvin Rodriguez. I think this is going to be his first fight under the Premier Boxing Champions banner since having crossed over after having been dropped by top rank, I should say. This is going to be his first fight on the banner for Ray Vargas, the former WBC Super Bantamweight Champion. He signed to the PBC over a year ago. In January of last year. He was a champion when he signed to the PBC, though he's not a champion anymore. He had to vacate his title. Initial reactions to the card per Rick Glacier. 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 One of the worst pay-per-view undercards I've ever seen. Why? As Canelo versus Plant are both getting overpaid drastically, especially Canelo, which is hampering the quality of the undercard. This is why you can't overpay your main event fighters by 12.5 million shaking my head not enough in the budget to dole out a solid card even mike coppinger who more often than not is quite supportive of the pbc's pay-per-view endeavors their cards cards that are just as weak as this one uh, even he stated canelo alvarez versus caleb plant pay-per-view undercard announced on paper one of the worst in recent memory no surprise with 50 million in guarantees to main event fighters andre durrell versus marco Hernandez, ray vargas versus leonard baez elvis rodriguez versus juan pablo romero i mean what about that says pay-per-view. The paying public is essentially paying for one fight, just one fight. The Canelo Alvarez versus Caleb Plant fight, the main event, because the card itself, as a card, in its entirety, doesn't offer much in terms of an appetizer. Adequate build-up that would thereby justify the price point for the card. $80. Canelo's gonna have to get out there and slap Caleb a couple of more times for build-up. There was a lot of buzz around the melee for the initial kickoff press conference for Caleb Plant versus Canelo Alvarez. A lot of people were buzzing about it. I think he's going to have to slap Caleb a few more times in the buildup to really help sell this thing because this undercard, it's not doing him any favors. And I view this as further indication that the PBC's biting off more than they can chew trying to do a Canelo Alvarez fight. You managed to get Canelo the kind of money that he wants in order to get him to cross over, but... What about the rest of the card? A decorative item that I think would have lended itself to the card's overall appeal, thereby helping to justify the card's price point, would have been having that David Benavidez versus Jose Uskateki fight somewhere on the undercard. <sighs> Maybe you make that the chief support, because by itself, it's not a strong enough standalone fight. Benavidez versus Uskateki ain't all that interesting by itself. But as the chief support to a bigger fight, a Canelo fight, a Canelo versus Caleb Plant undisputed super middleweight title fight. Well, that would have been a little better. Nobody gives a fuck about Andre Durrell. I'm sorry, but I have to be curt. You're gonna pour sugar on shit to spare your feelings. Earlier this year, the WBC ordered a fight between the reigning WBC featherweight champion Gary Russell Jr., who hasn't fought at all this year and hasn't fought since February of last year. Earlier this year, there was a fight ordered between Gary Russell Jr., the reigning champion, and Ray Vargas, who is going to be fighting on this card, though not at featherweight. It appears he's staying 
at Super Bantamweight. You ask me what a good decorative item would have been for this card. Gary Russell Jr. versus Ray Vargas. Would have been better than Vargas versus the guy he's fighting. And what about Jermall Charlo? Jermall Charlo, who may end up fighting Canelo Alvarez sometime down the line. I mean, it's a possibility. Maybe Canelo does decide to keep busy with that guy. What's he so busy with that he couldn't have been added to this card? He was last in action in June of this year. June to November is about five months. Don't give me the Jermall Charlo needs downtime crap, because Canelo Alvarez was in action the month before Jermall Charlo in May against an unbeaten champion in Billy Joe Saunders. And if Canelo Alvarez, the cash cow of boxing in this part of the world, can keep this kind of schedule to where he's fought three times in the last 12 months, and this, this will be the fourth. If the cash cow of boxing can keep that kind of busy schedule, there's no reason in the world Jermall Charlo shouldn't be more active, especially if he wants to get a Canelo Alvarez fight. I think both Charlo and Benavidez should have made appearances on this undercard. Pay-per-views ain't selling like hotcakes. The numbers are down. Wilder vs. Fury 3 is a prime example. This second pay-per-view did about 800, 850,000 pay-per-view buys. Over a year later, the third fight brought in 200,000 less pay-per-view buys. From roughly 800, 850,000 pay-per-view buys sold here in the United States to only 600,000. 600,000 with a year to build up the fight. Hell, over a year. There's over a year between the second fight and the third fight. This pay-per-view, given what it's costing the PBC to put on, it's likely going to flop. There's likely going to be a lot of red ink to go around. And it won't be an indictment on Canelo Alvarez. It'll be an indictment on the PBC's ability to put together a solid card and sell it. They're biting off more than they can chew here. And just in keeping with the theme of pay-per-views and who needs them, Eddie Hearn explains why pay-per-view will be needed on DAZN for unique events. He was quoted as saying, it's very important to get the difference of bringing pay-per-view to a platform and bringing it for specific fights. Absolutely 100%. The aim of DAZN is to bring you traditional pay-per-view nights we've seen in the past five years as part of the monthly subscription Hearn told Boxing Social. They need to have a pay-per-view functionality for unique circumstances. That's the key word. When you look at it now, Alexander Usyk versus Anthony Joshua, that is not gonna go as part of your DAZN subscription, being quite frank with you. So you need pay-per-view functionality to be able to do that. They have pay-per-view functionality within their platform. White versus Valine, Chisora versus Parker. These fights you used to see on Sky Pay-Per-View are 100% not a part of that vision. For years, the zone was pushing their pay-per-view is dead slogan to attract subscribers. Hearn explains that a pay-per-view model on the zone would only be used for quote-unquote unique situations. That vision is about providing value for money to subscribers in different ways. Maybe those fights don't land on DAZN, so it won't exist. But they need to have pay-per-view functionality for unique events, Hearn said, because that model will not work to attract those mega fights. So they want to be in a position to at least be in the game. When you talk about those once in a year or twice in a year experiences, that doesn't change the plan of taking the events where you would moan about being part of the pay-per-view model and stop making them as pay-per-view to put them as part of the DAZN schedule. In that way, Eddie Hearn's not wrong. I mean, the last Chisora versus Parker fight, that was a Sky Sports box office pay-per-view. You would have had to pay pay-per-view in order to see that if you were in the UK, though not in the US. Same applies to Dillian White. Dillian White's fights normally are shown on Sky Sports box office, whereas his next fight with Otto Valine, you're gonna get to see that as a part of your DAZN subscription. That's not on Sky. Oh, people still feel betrayed. They still feel like Eddie and Joe Markowski, they're going back on their word. They started off by saying that pay-per-view was dead and it looks like it hasn't kicked the bucket. Not yet. I'll tell you what I think led to this move. When Canelo Alvarez was in negotiations for the Caleb Plant fight, the people over there at the PBC were able to offer Canelo Alvarez another arm of revenue that DAZN didn't have at that time. Pay-per-view options, pay-per-view functionality. Canelo Alvarez we just talked about. It's not a secret that the people over there at DAZN wanted to do that fight. And they had their own offer on the table, but Canelo Alvarez decided to go with the PBC's offer instead because it came with a sizable guarantee, money up front, that he's used to, and the promise of more money. If the pay-per-view has an upside. For what it's worth and what it's costing the PBC, I don't think it's going to. I don't think that pay-per-view is going to have an upside. I think there's going to be a lot of red ink all over the place, given the operational costs, guarantees to the fighters. I think it's gonna flop. But that's not Canelo's problem. It's not his concern. He looks at how much money they're willing to give him up front, something like 40, 50 million, plus whatever he can make 
from the upside if the pay-per-view has an upside and it seems like a more lucrative option. The people at the zone want to be able to provide that kind of option to keep the likes of a Canelo Alvarez on board. We know that Anthony Joshua has gone all in with Matchroom, though not necessarily with the zone. You get the sense that Anthony Joshua's fights are going to go to the highest bidder. DAZN, they could have provided Anthony Joshua with a fuck ton of money up front. They could. But what they couldn't give him was pay-per-view functionality. That arm of revenue. That may be money. The way is maybe if the pay-per-view does exceptionally well, there's more money in it for the fighter, more money in it for the platform. That's what they couldn't give him before that they may be able to give him now. The Joshua versus Usyk rematch, in all likelihood, is going to do better numbers than the first fight did the same way it was with the Andy Ruiz fights and they want to capitalize off of that I've no doubts that that rematch if it lands on the zone in the United Kingdom it's gonna be billed as a pay-per-view my question is as a US based subscriber will the same be true for us will we have to pay pay-per-view prices in order to see that fight and what will the price point be moving forward for existing subscribers shouldn't we get a discount since we've already paid up through the month and some through the year People aren't going to be happy if the price point is anything to the tune of $80 when they're already paying monthly and or annual subscriptions. You're already going back on your word. Your initial sales pitch was that pay-per-view was dead. And, you know, that was a big part of what made zone appealing to so many people. But... If you're charging inflated price points for pay-per-views on top of what you're already charging people for a subscription, you're no different than the other guys. It's been value for money up until this point. The World Boxing Super Series, the Anthony Joshua fights, the Canelo fights. I mean, it really has been value for money throughout. On top of all the other content. Matchroom stuff, the Golden Boy stuff. It's all been good. But moving forward, if pay-per-view functionality is going to be implemented, special focus has to go into what the price point is going to be for existing subscribers.